Garlic farming in Kenya requires farmers to understand the variety of seeds available, the right type of soil, and the most suitable climates to grow the crop in. Like anywhere else in the world, garlic farming in Kenya requires a farmer to identify a well-drained piece of land with light soil. It is important to note that garlic does not grow in waterlogged soils. Our farmer tells us garlic does well in gardens that enjoy full sun. In other words, a farmer should not choose a garden that has too much shade. Garlic planting is easy because all one needs to do is get mature garlic known as seed garlic, separate the cloves and plant each clove individually. Today's episode of Kilimo na Biashara. Today you're gonna enjoy this. We're doing garlic farming, but it will be a mix of farming garlic and listening or singing to some good music. Join me in the farm. Gilad. Jambo. Hey. Karibu. Habari. Asante. Yes, I heard you're so fluent in Swahili. <laughs> I'm trying. People Welcome. Wouldn't... Thank you so much. People wouldn't think that I'll find you in a farm. Here I we mean... are. This is Oleraha <laughs> Farm. <laughs> Welcome. Thank to you. Koshambani every day. Me, I've gotten used to seeing you in, in, in gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> music. But I mean, you know, I, I always tell people mm -hmm. we are not here as humans. Mm -hmm. We are not here to do just one thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a singer. I have a PR agency, mm -hmm. but I'm also a very passionate farmer. Mm -hmm. Here we grow garlic, saumo, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big, so I'm the biggest fan of garlic you'll ever find. Wow, I'm so impressed, Gilad. But now we are so used to seeing you doing your gigs, events. I mean, but now I'm getting you in the farm. So you know, I mean, I'm, first of all, I've been in agriculture, around agriculture, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was at the embassy, part of my work was to work with the Israel Aid Organization that dealt a lot with bringing courses in drip irrigation to teach Kenyan farmers, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Later on, I worked eight years for Amiran. So we dealt a lot in greenhouses, drip irrigation, mm -hmm. seeds, fertilizers. I was around the agriculture space for almost a decade mm -hmm. when you add it all up together, yeah, maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, but never really did it myself. It's a very different experience when you put your hands in the soil and, and you really plan a project and you really do it yourself. So that happened uh, about a year and a half ago, we, just before COVID. Uh, a friend of mine suggested, let's do, you know, let's uh, go into a project together. Um, he is an expert in, in garlic. Uh, and I had known garlic, but very generally. Um, yeah, but I mean, now my experience is already third season of growing. In agriculture, experience is the best teacher. You do, you see, you learn. That's how you become a farmer. The best way is just to do by yourself. So as a musician, you ventured into agriculture. You know, for me, I don't think any of us is here in this life to just do one thing. I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. I've been a journalist, I've been a diplomat, corporate executive. So I mean, if you want to put another hat and call me farmer, absolutely, call me farmer, you know? You are and a musician, <laughs> and you know, you'll find me walking around the farm singing, so I'm farmer singer at the same time. Sima mi leve. Tafadali, sema milele, baby usijali, and if tuko pamoja. Now I want to move Gilad from music and take you to the farm. Now tell us about this type of farming. One of the most, I mean, first of all, you know, like in anything, but especially in, in farming, success is in the details. God is in the details, you know? So, I mean, if you really want to succeed, you must pay attention to all the little things. So, for example, we made a comment earlier when you walk through, you see the farm is very clean for weeds. Weeds is that detail that competes with your own crop, yeah? So you have to make sure to remove. They compete for the nutrients. The weed competes for the water uh, and actually wraps itself around your, uh, you know, your crop. So you really have to take care and fight weeds. That's an example of details. The water to make sure to give the right amount. When you work with drip irrigation, you open for five minutes, three minutes, four minutes, and it makes a difference how much water the crop is getting. Yeah. So a lot of, lot of little detail. 
when it comes to garlic, the success, um, the secret of growing successful garlic begins with the cloves that you plant. That's the key to everything. And that's where most of the farmers mess up. Uh, they plant cloves that are not ready, so they spend a month underground. These, these plants have been, uh, this is what, 10 or 12 days old, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So that means we planted and almost immediately they shoot out mm -hmm. and they grow. Yeah. If it would have stayed underground for a month, by the time it comes out, it's weak. Mm -hmm. It has to fight to succeed. Yeah. So you're probably not going to get a successful crop. Take me through the germination process of this particular crop. Uh, germination is um, a professional process. It takes uh, almost a month to germinate for a customer. So for example, here at Oleraha, we um, sell uh, germinated seeds, cloves, ready to plant. But we also buy back from our customers, the ones who buy our seeds. We buy back the garlic, we give them a contract, we give them a good market price, um, as long as they're growing with our seeds. So for example, if you're a client and you come to me and you say, I want to plant an acre, I'll tell you, okay, I need a month to germinate and prepare your seeds. That's how long it will take me to get your cloves ready for planting just in time. So during the germination process, you put manure, what else? When we began from virgin soil, okay? So of course we brought in, we removed, you know, whatever trees were on the soil and any bushes and stuff like that. Came in with a tractor, we did a couple of rounds to clear up, you know, um, to turn over the soil, you have to do that a couple of times. Uh, and then before starting anything else, we mixed cow manure on the entire shamba. The, the good powder manure is very healthy for the soil. So we mixed cow manure on the entire shamba. Um, then we began to prepare the beds. Then only after that we stretched the drip lines, etc. But uh, at the beginning you mix in some good manure. Prepare your beds. Your beds have to be a meter wide with 30 centimeter trench in between so you don't waste land. Yeah. Your farm is so clean. How do you even maintain it? Hard work. Hard work, hard work. I mean, there's no... At the end of the day on the farm, there really isn't any substitute. I think in anything in life, but on the farm, there's no substitute for hard, smart work. Yeah? So if the weed is your enemy, you have to get rid of it. There is a product that we use once in a season to get rid of weeds, but generally it's just weeding, 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 you know, like you used to do in school when you were punished. Yeah. They'd send you to do weeding. Same thing. And we just make sure that we work hard on the farm. Yeah. There's never such a situation where there's no work on the farm. So when you're doing garlic farming, does it require a lot of water? It's, it's a very, especially at the beginning stage of the season, um, a season is four months. So let's say for the first half of the free season, the first two months, and especially the first month, you really have to give it a lot of water. So like when people, even on Facebook, guys will write to me and say, I want to do this, I have land. My first question, do you have water? If yes, how much? What's your water source? Is it stable? If you don't have borehole, river, some kind of stable water source, don't bother. Uh, it's not something you want to do. Any kind of farming in general is really hard to do without water. Garlic is even more so because at the beginning of the season you really need a lot of water. Is garlic a difficult crop to maintain? Not really. It's not a difficult crop. It's a very strong crop in that it can survive a lot in terms of weather. You know, this morning we're seeing a bit of foggy kind of uh, coldish weather. But we also had last season was pure good old Cajado sunshine. Um, and we did well then and we're doing well now. Uh, the, the soil here is good in Kenya, mm -hmm. in general. It's not just here in Kajiado. It's true if you go to Nyeri, to Timau, if you go to Machakos. Mm -hmm. Soil in Kenya is very good soil. We joke that if you plant a rock in the ground in Kenya, it will grow green. <laughs> Gilad, many farmers are complaining about pests and diseases. Have you experienced that? Okay, you have pests. For example, last season, mm -hmm. in the middle of the Shamba over there, we suddenly got a section of two meters where we discovered um, red ants, okay? So red ants suddenly in the middle of nowhere, and of course, that's part of also a good practice, which is scouting. You have to walk around your shamba all the time and scout and scout and see what you can find if there's disease. So we found red ants. Now the ants, they eat the leaves, okay? They don't eat the bottom, the, the bulb, but they eat the leaves. And we discovered them in time so we could address it. We, you know, we brought a chemical, we used what we needed, and we solved the problem of the ants. Is garlic prone to diseases? Not at all, not at all. Garlic is a very, very strong crop. There are the known diseases that you have to deal with, like rust, 
Rust is very common in garlic, especially in this kind of weather or fog and stuff like that. There's a, a, a good product in the market that can handle that. Mm -hmm. Spray for the rust and you're good to go. So which type of garlic do you have here? We have different kinds. Uh, we have different varieties. Uh, what you're seeing here planted is Rwanda uh, Giant. We also have Africa Giant. Here right now in the Shamba, we've planted two varieties, Rwanda Giant and Africa Giant. Uh, last season, we did Africa Giant and Arusha. They are different. Arusha is a more purple, a bit smaller in its bulb, um, very strong in taste and smell, wonderful for cooking. So we have a client, she wants only Arusha. So we grow only for her those seeds. She's by Namanga and she buys from us regularly. Um, Rwanda seeds right now are very popular and they're giving a wonderful result. The, the garlic itself is incredible. The, the, the crop is very strong. And Africa Giant is traditionally what we've been growing here. Africa Giant, or it's called also Moyala Giant, because it comes from that area, originally from Ethiopia. Garlic is a high value crop. How is the uptake in the markets? So far, we've sold everything we've gotten our hands on. Truth, we really haven't had any problem, whether we grew it, whether we bought it back from our farmers, we have no problem selling, there's enough demand. It's true, it's not a crop like onion or tomato where you walk into the market and you walk out with a bag of two kg, four kg. With garlic, you buy pieces. Nobody buys, you know, two kg of garlic, you don't have what to do with it. Um, but it, but there's not a, we haven't encountered any problem in market. The truth is, the Kenyan market will absorb good quality garlic. So if you come with small, small and bad results, don't be surprised if they don't want it. Gilad, that has been quite insightful. By now, I'm sure there's a farmer who's curious on how to farm this particular crop. Would you show me how to plant? Yeah, let's Let, go. Let's go to the other side. <laughs> wow, it's, it's, it's so clean. So this is our germination room, mm -hmm. and here is where we uh, here is where we're preparing for another client. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. but this is a more advanced stage. They've already been shade light, mm -hmm. shade light. Just pick one randomly for your camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let's say a nice big one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that it's ready for planting? Mm -hmm. If you break it in half very gently, mm -hmm. okay, what you'll find mm -hmm. oh. inside. You see the shoot? There's a shoot. You see the shoot? Yeah. Look at that. That's oh. gorgeous. That's ready for planting. That's amazing. Okay. Wow. That's ready to go. This is how we want to get it to a customer. Yeah. Put this in the ground. Within a week, 10 days, you'll get those little green shoots that we saw over there. Wow. That's a very healthy way to grow garlic. Let's grab a bunch of these. Okay. Let's go plant some garlic. Okay. I'm ready. Let's Sour. go. Yeah. We just pick randomly. Yeah, let's take a few okay. and we can go plant some. Okay. Let's go. Okay. We are going to plant these particular garlics, but before that, we are taking a short commercial break. We will be right back. Don't go away.
mpenzi how you been unaenda le aje amani aje yeah sema mpenzi how you been umepotelea wapi umefanya nini na nani welcome back to kilimo na biashara right now we want to plant this garlic join me twende kazi twende <laughs> So I'm here really we go. Curious. Here you go. Stand over there. Thank you. And we put our seeds down. Mm -hmm. Now, you the drip irrigation, uh -huh. the drip irrigation gives you emitters, mm -hmm. okay? The holes. Yeah. We plant. There so, are many meters? Oh, well, there, there's the space here is 15 centimeters. Mm -hmm. When you plant, first mm -hmm. of all, you make sure that you plant with the top up, right? Mm -hmm. And the root down. Oh, yeah, wow. if you plant upside down, it'll grow backwards, yeah? Okay. So it's very important that you plant with the top up, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then your emitters are giving you a sign. So we plant, yeah. we're gonna plant one there, mm -hmm. we're gonna plant one there, mm -hmm. we're gonna plant one in the middle of both emitters. That's mm -hmm. something that we do here. Wow. Simple, simple, okay? Yeah. I don't even need the stick. All I need is to put this in. I can help the you depth with here. Mm -hmm. The depth of the garlic itself mm -hmm. and cover. So, for example, you do this one. Mm -hmm. I just use kidogo. Uh -huh. Then I measure it with my hand. Remember your emitters and mm -hmm. in between, yeah? Oh, yeah? So, if you put that there now, then mm -hmm. this one, you want to put it here. Oh. Yeah? You have to check where the emitters you always, are. Always, otherwise, they'll grow, they'll compete for space against each other. You told me you have different types of garlic here. You know, there are several types of varieties. Right now on mm -hmm. the Shamba, yeah. we have two kinds of varieties. Mm -hmm. We have the Africa giant and we have the Rwanda giant. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that the differences between them, mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you look here, yeah. they're planted next to each other. Mm -hmm. So when you look closely at the Rwanda, mm -hmm. you'll see that the stem is thicker and oh. the color of the, uh, for example, this is Rwanda, mm -hmm. okay? and you can see the color of the leaves is a bit brighter. Mm -hmm. The Africa giant on this side, thinner leaves, yeah, a bit of a thinner uh, stem. Mm -hmm. If you can see here on this side, yeah. most of the stuff we've planted here is Rwanda, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. And, and even here, what you can see, which is really interesting, oh. is the very big stems, mm -hmm. yeah? So Rwanda enjoys very big stems and the result is also mm -hmm. a very big bulb at the end. So what's the difference between the African and the Rwandan garlic? So different varieties have different characteristics. We talked about Arusha earlier, which we don't have here right now. We planted last season. Very purple, very strong in taste and smell. If you compare the Rwanda giant to the Africa giant, Rwanda giant is a bit more purple and a bit stronger in taste, I found, than the Africa giant. Both grow very big, very nice take up in the market. Uh, yeah, right now I'm a big fan of the Rwanda variety. I'm really enjoying it. But also the Africa giant has served us really well. So which one commands the market between the ones that you've mentioned? It really is a question of what's popular right now. Africa giant was the only thing you could find in the Kenyan market. And now in the last few months, uh, the Rwanda giant has come in because I understand they grew a lot of uh, extra seeds and imported from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So our market is right now blessed and enriched both with Rwanda and Africa giant. We're seeing a lot of them in the market, which is a good thing. It gives you, you know, we're spoiled for choice. This is a huge chunk of land. Do you satisfy the local markets? You know, it would be really cool to get to a point of export. I know that there are people exporting. It takes a lot more fine tuning. For example, export demands that the, the bulb is all the same six centimeters. It demands that they all keep their stem upon sale. Here we don't do that, we just deliver it, you know, as the garlic itself. So it really is a question of more fine tuning, more professionalism, let me say, for export. But right now we really haven't gotten into that because the Kenyan market is just fine. There's a nice take up, there's a good demand. So right now we're very solid here. This is a well-managed farm, Gilad. What are your best uh, management practices? 
you know, we say agriculture is in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, is do the best that you can to give the crop the best chance of success. Mm -hmm. That begins with properly preparing the soil. It continues to giving the right amount of water, of course, like we said so many times, to choosing and using the right germinated cloves. So that'll give you the good result. And to scouting your, you know, your, your shamba and to making sure that the weeds are removed mm -hmm. and to watching for any pest or disease. Mm -hmm. Success is in the details. Mm -hmm. You've shown me um, how this particular crop germinates, but when we are here, how long will it take before you harvest? So if you take the ones we just planted now, mm -hmm. okay, then you measure roughly four months. Mm -hmm. Come back, Karibu Nusana, in four months. Yes, yes, yes. In four months, I'll be back here to take the ones we planted. So what are those farm practices that you do in order to get maximum production in your farm? Like I said, scouting is key. Mm -hmm. Walk around the shamba, pay attention to the crops, look for any spots you might find on the leaf, mm -hmm. which are not here right now, but if you find, pay attention, what could that be? Mm -hmm. Pay attention to pests, pay attention to ants, mm -hmm. pay attention to standing water if it shouldn't be there because it brings disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, really, every little detail counts. So, I mean, you can take a general look and just see green, mm -hmm. but for me, I literally see them mm -hmm. one by one and in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when you work with drip irrigation, you have to make sure that the water is coming out, they can clog up, right? Yeah. So you really have to pay attention and watch and make sure. One of the best ways to know is when you look across the shamba, you see that it's uniform. That's the best sign of success. It means that we had good germination and it means that we're growing evenly. If there was a slant, then you would know that not enough water is reaching the end and your drip system is not as good. There's a lot of you know little things you can tell just by looking at the farm. But this, the truth is, pay attention to the details, be here, be present. So as much as there is telephone farming, mm -hmm. I come here almost every day, at least four or five times a week. I've been present on this farm. Pretty much me or my partners are here pretty much throughout. We visit all the time. We're online all the time with the farm. So we live and breathe what's going on here. Yeah. You're so passionate with garlic. What are the nutritional values or what is the secret? First of all, it's very good for the common cold. You know, recently with COVID, mm -hmm. everybody's drinking dawa and mixing it, honey, lemon, ginger, garlic is also the same. Mm -hmm. So we've been seeing a nice uptake of garlic, you know, in this time of COVID. Mm -hmm. It's also good, uh, it lowers blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It's good to fight cholesterol and heart disease. Mm -hmm. In general, it's a healthy crop. Mm -hmm. And you know, many of us know that you put it around your neck to keep away uh, evil eye and, <laughs> and to keep away uh, uh, bad wow, luck. So you can also that. use wow. it for that. So me, I'm blessed only with good Good luck here. What type of yield can I get in an acre? On an acre, you'll invest, give or take, 300,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And with low, um, with low, uh, let's say you only return about four tons, mm -hmm. and let's say you only sell for 150 shillings, mm -hmm. which are both very low because you'll grow more and sell higher. Mm -hmm. But to be conservative so that you don't have too high expectations, mm -hmm. Even if you grow four tons and sell at 150, you're still making 600,000, wow. which is, means you've doubled your money from 300,000. Mm -hmm. So what are the climatic conditions favorable for garlic farming? You know, in Kenya, mm -hmm. our soil and our weather. Mm -hmm. As an Israeli, when you come to Kenya and you find this healthy soil and this wonderful weather, we joke that you can put a rock in the ground in Kenya and it will grow green. So of course that's true when you're growing a proper crop with proper systems mm -hmm. and, and proper fertilization, etc. Mm -hmm. But the soil in Kenya is very good. Of course, you have to get your soil tested at the beginning mm -hmm. so that you know what exactly you need. Again, details. Mm -hmm. But other than the soil test, whether you have black cotton soil, whether you have red soil, the chances are you know, you, you're, you're pretty safe in Kenya. Um, like I said, lots of water. Test your water as well to make sure it's not too salinated. Have you ever thought of venturing into value addition with this particular crop? First of all, we've thought about it, yeah, and we already have in mind our Ole Raha uh, garlic paste, you know, just like everything else. But we already sell garlic to companies that make garlic paste, it's a common thing. And we are seeing more and more, you know, added value products for garlic. So of course, it's something that's crossed our mind. We're developing our brand. It's only a year old. So we have Ole Raha germinated seeds and we have Ole Raha garlic. And now, you know, God willing in the future, maybe we'll venture into garlic paste and other things because it's definitely a market you know, where there's a demand. Talk to me about sustainability as a business. You're such a successful farmer, I must say. You know, what's important is to create a sector, whether, whether you're growing chickens or cows or garlic or onions or whatever, what's important is the sustainability, okay? And sustainability means it's a business, 
and everybody involved has to make their money. The agro vet who I buy the foliar fertilizer, he must make a profit. And the farmer who's growing the garlic that I sold him the, the, the seeds, he's got to make money. And the market who's buying the garlic, they've got to get a good product so they can sell it on and make money. And the farmer like me, I've got to make also my profit. As long as everybody's making a profit and there's no donations inside, that's stable, that's solid, that's capitalist, proper, profitable market. I was going through your social media platform and I saw that you're doing a lot of mentorship, especially in agriculture. Take us through that. My Facebook page has transformed from a place where I launch only new music, you know, and share my music life, celebrity, Manenos Nini Nini, to um, a place where we're talking about garlic and agriculture because I started posting and I saw the response was insane. So people started as asking questions, so I started answering. And I find myself spending a lot of time giving advice to folks, young people on Facebook, uh, on my page. Um, Oleraha itself has an Instagram page, so a lot of the time I'm chatting with people through there. Um, but yeah, it's become very active on social media. We've had people come to the farm, you know, just to get a feeling and we invite them over to come and see. So yeah, I mean, it's something I believe that if the youth of Kenya get more involved in, they'll impact the entire economy. It's a revolution waiting to happen. Yes, you're already creating a revolution already. A good revolution, an agribusiness revolution. I'd like to know what's your secret, the only secret that you know in order to have a good harvest. My secret weapon. Yes, your secret you weapon. have to, you have to sing to your garlic. You what? have to sing to your crop. Really? Twimbe pamoja. Se mami lele, tafadali. Se mami lele, baby usi jali. And if tuko pamoja, baby. Will you say me lele? Wow, that has been quite a show you've experienced. You have to sing for your crops to get a good harvest. That has been Kilimo Nabiashara. I hope you enjoyed the show. My name is Linda Koske. Sema milele. Hafadali. Sema milele. Sema milele.